Hola amigos, Sweatshopper Club, episode 16, Applied Sprint Training, this time by James Smith. We're back to strength and conditioning, we're back to athletic performance, we're back to the good stuff. Uh, this book, I believe, was published in 2003, uh, but was reformatted into this uh, pretty recently. Uh, there's a note in here, I think it's 2020. Um, I just saw it as I flipped by. Yeah, 2020. Text and illustrations reformatted. The whole book is, if I can flip through with you, black and white. There are some graphs in here, there's some pictures, things of that nature. I always find it hard to uh, assimilate what's actually going on with pictures, especially when they're black and white. Uh, when we're trying to describe something happening in 4D uh, and then depicting it in a 2D fashion. But uh, the author, James Smith, um, easy to say that he's a brilliant mind, um, which makes some of the reading a little bit in this, some of the diction uh, and the wording a little bit difficult. Uh, so some pages or some paragraphs I had to read over. Um, there are a couple areas in this. I believe he published it himself, um, but I want to get you know all the, the tip or tat stuff out of the way so I can uh, praise the book. because This is an absolutely tremendous book when it comes to uh, sprint training. This is talking about linear speed. It's 199 pages, almost 200 pages of just running. So um, we're talking about uh, max aerobic speed, uh, long to short or short to long methods, um, vertical uh, loading, a lot of Charlie Francis uh, stuff in here, if, if you got those illusions, um, and a lot of very chancy as well as uh, Bonner Chuck in here as well. So uh, this stems from a lot of different influences, but at the same time, uh, James puts his own perspective on how we should manipulate training based on the bioenergetic, um, biomotor and biomechanical uh, needs of each athlete and each team, uh, depending on their sport, right? So uh, very fantastic, fantastic book. Um, and again, there are so many chapters in this. I could quote literally every paragraph in this book. This is just a lot of really good information that's been boiled down over and over and over again um, to be very salient, to be very executable within you know 24 hours, I guess. If, if you're training somebody the next day, you could definitely use this. Uh, it's fantastic. So um, I believe there are 20 chapters to this. Uh, I'm sorry, there's 19 chapters. It's funny, there's 199 pages, there's 19 chapters. Uh, there's not 200 pages and 20 chapters. It's funny how that works. Um, but there's also workout regimens in the back, depending on you know who's there. So he has the Dubai Tournament Preparation 2012, Australia Tournament Preparation 2012. I think that's for the Portugal team that he was uh, uh, working with for rugby. Uh, he does a lot of consulting in other places as well. So um, to actually quote and get into this, um, one thing I found that was super uh, interesting, um, or thought provoking, because interesting is a boring word. One thing that I found that was thought provoking is the idea that we need to make accommodations based on how much space we have for tempo running. There's a lot of tempo work in here, a lot of tempo thoughts. Um, and then max aerobic speed was another one that was interesting. Maximal aerobic speed training has gained popularity for developing aerobic qualities in team-based field sport athletes. The protocols are based upon aerobic value, uh, it est, and athletes fastest 1.5 to 2 kilometer effort in seconds divided by the distance. This value is then used for interval uh, training set up in such a way that the bioenergetic stress borders on and often crosses the lactic threshold due to the brief recoveries, uh, 15 seconds, that typically separate work bouts of equal duration, eh, about 15 seconds. So there's a good uh, tidbit for you on maximal aerobic speed and the value and how you would divide to, to get that. So um, it's, I always think it's funny when there's YouTube links in here um, with different books. One thing that I didn't like in the book, um, and this is kind of just a caveat for me, is that um, he'll use acronyms for different uh, entities or, or different ideas or different concepts. Um, but usually you'll say like max, this is MAS is, is one that he uses, well, uses a lot, but you'll say maximal aerobic speed, MAS, and you'll have a parentheses and you'll say MAS. And then for the rest of the book, it'll say MAS. But that never happened. So there's a couple in here that I, I had to go back and look up. IF was one of them. Uh, there's, some, there's some different ones in here as well. Um, that if you're not really like focused on reading this, like very rarely do I have to read the same page over and over again. This happened multiple, multiple times in my three sittings to consume this. Um, I read about 40 pages, then I read about 80 pages, um, and then I finished it with another 80 pages. Um, it's getting a card, I was getting an oil change, so I had plenty of time to read this. So uh, 
good consumption of this book. This book, uh, to praise it again, um, just like training, it flows and continues seamlessly so you don't know where we are in the periodization. It just kind of flows into itself. Um, what is this? Long and short, short to long. It's fantastic. I dog eared this in terms of past specific work capacity. We can skip that. Um, what do we got here? Reduction of non contact injuries, uh, data, things of that nature. Um, looking at where we are with like how, how much an athlete per sport, so with their demand, but per sport, uh, how much they, they get in mileage per, per session of, of per gameplay, per competition. Cornerbacks and wideouts in American football may cover up to 1.25 miles or right around 2K per game. NBA players may average between 2 and 2.5 miles per game or 3.2 to 4 kilometers per game. Tennis players in a full five-step match may cover between 3 and 5 miles or 4.8 to 8 kilometers. That is a ton in a single contest. Hamstrings as a barometer of training load management is an interesting chapter that I think uh, more coaches, strength coaches, uh, should spend time on. Uh, one thing that I found out about James that I really liked, um, or one quote that I heard was, a strength coach um, usually you see is in the weight room and they're doing their, their hoop de doo and, and they're yelling and they're doing their thing and people are getting stronger and then you get them out on the track, you get them out on the turf and they're doing speed work to change direction stuff and they're pretty darn quiet, right? Because they're so focused on what's going on in the weight room. You gotta have all of it. There's a global approach to this and, and that's an allusion to another book uh, that James Smith has as well. Uh, there's a rehabilitation. I like his outlook on rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is nothing more than reestablishing low tolerance for, ultimately, the competition action. The process of reestablishing low tolerance demands extensive work and in order to reform the vital task specific work capacity, the volume of work must be substantial, yet strategically managed. As there are no definitive load parameters for rehabilitative measures, it is the responsibility of the coach and athlete to maintain transparent communication. This ensures synergy, between the process of instruction, execution, and results. I find that important. I think you would too. Uh, training speed is something that is, again, trainable as opposed to something that is um, either have it or you don't. It's definitely trainable. Um, a lot of speed coaches understand that. A lot of um, sport coaches uh, still lean on that for some reason. Displacing a force vector and deceleration. We talk about sports vector, or, um, force vectors. Uh, I guess I guess there are sports vectors also, even though I misspoke. Um, but we're accelerating, and you end up in a horizontal fashion. Uh, I like that he also mentioned this, and I preach this: the shin angle and the two-point start should equal and be congruent to your back angle from your hip to your shoulder um, to get a good start. And your shin angle should be pretty horizontal for the most part, as much as you can when you accelerate. Um, acceleration, even though you might be in an upright top speed uh, shape. Uh, if you're still increasing your speed, you're still accelerating, right? So you're not really truly at top speed. You're trying to maintain top speed if you're still increasing your speed. Uh, there's different uh, charts early in this that caught my attention of like Usain Bolt. He um, mentions Usain a lot in terms of like what his splits are for each 10 meters and, and where he's at for his 100 meter runs uh, compared to Powell. I mean, that, that's fantastic. Um, and the concern there was also just like, what are we seeing with uh, producing a lot of force, a lot of ground contact time and acceleration, that force vector is horizontal, but there are vertical um, displacements involved as well. So um, just like when we talk about fire energetic demands and substrates, um, whether it's glycolytic or, or whatever it is, uh, aerobic or anaerobic, you can go on and on and on, with CP, um, ATP, yada, 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 all the fun acronyms I just threw to you guys without mentioning it, just like I said, my pet peeve and my caveat was before. What I'm getting to is you might be uh, using, you know, your creatine phosphate and replenishing that, but there's still aerobic substrates going on at the same time. Everything is uh, interdependent, interdependent on itself. So um, even though with running and sprinting and the two points are even walking into it or even a falling start, you might be horizontal. Uh, and really getting into that acceleration phase when you start out, there's still some load management in a vertical fashion. When you're at top speed, there's still some horizontal um, displacement and, and force vector there as well. Um, and along that force curve, it's very important to understand that they happen simultaneously, con um, concurrently, um, until you are done running. Uh, and yeah, so here we go. This is a nice picture to start out with. And you can see the shin angle and the back angle are similar. The shin, the back, big extension there. Talk about that. So really fantastic book. This is something I'm going to lean on heavily for the future. Um, this is something that I 
pushed off for a long time. Uh, and again, just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant work. And definitely like that there's uh, breakdowns in terms of weeks and what we're accumulating uh, in terms of a basic structure at the end. Because periodization is nothing but a plan. You know, sometimes you stick to the plan, sometimes uh, it's fluid and it's agile. So that's all I got for you guys today. Applied Sprint Training, James Smith. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic book.